Okay, we're back. Now, we try to see uh, a new formula. Hopefully, a um, couple of you have seen this before. If you haven't, don't worry at all. Uh, we'll try to see how we can use this formula uh, and solve problems. Okay. Now, uh, the formula is uh, we say the difference quotient form, okay? Or actually, it's a definition, not a formula, to be honest. So, let me write it for you first. So, formula of the definition is function of x plus h minus function of f or function of x divided by h where of course h can't be zero okay now as this is the definition if we are given a function let's say um, f of x equals x squared let's say let's say that's our function so first of all we need to know how we can get from f of x to f of x plus h okay so let's first see that so if f of x is a function whatever it is it could be x squared it could be at x cubed it could be anything else whatever it is if we want to replace that by something else, let's say by two, that means wherever we have x, we just want to replace that x by two. So if f of x is x squared, f of two will be two squared, okay? Similarly, f of three would be three squared, f of h would be h squared that means wherever you have that x if you're replacing that by something else you just need to replace all of your x's by that value okay so if we have f of x equals x squared what should be our f of x plus h can you see that f of x plus h would be, we'll just replace that x by x plus h, right? So that would be x plus h. As I said, I'll replace this x by x plus h, okay? So this x plus h would be squared. That's it. Okay? Now, if I use the definition of quotient, the difference of quotient, rather, if my f of x, we'll stick to that x squared first. So the definition of difference of quotient is f of x plus h minus f of x over h, over h right? So just to replace these values, so as f of x is x squared, f of x plus h would be x plus h squared, right? Minus f of x is already x squared, as we know, over h, right? Okay, if we carry on uh, simplifying that, we first expand this using the formula of a plus b the quantity squared. So, to expand this, this would be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, right? Minus, we have x squared coming down from here, okay? So as you can see, you can cancel this x squared. So finally, we have 2xh plus h squared over h. Let's see whether we can simplify it more or not. 
as far as I can see, we can actually factor out one H from each of these terms. Okay. So if we do that, if I factor out H from this term, I'm taking out this H, right? So I'll still have a 2X. And if I factor out H from this term, I'll still have one H. So easily I can cancel this too. So finally, I'll have a 2X plus H and that's our answer. Okay. Next, we want to see how can we um, find the domain of a function, okay? Now the question could be what is a domain? A domain is the defined value of x for which our function remains uh, defined or for which our function doesn't get undefined. Okay. Now, what does that mean? That means, let's say we have y equals x squared. Okay. Let's say we have y equals x squared. Now, we want to see whether we have uh, any value for any value of x for which this y gets undefined. We'll just uh, ignore those, and apart from those values, everything will be a part of our domain. Okay, now for y equals x squared, is there any value of x for which this gets undefined? And the answer is no, whatever you take negative three, half, zero, whatever you take from negative infinity to infinity, whatever you take, which value you take, doesn't matter. This is always going to be defined. So we'll say all real numbers are, or in other words, you might say from negative infinity to infinity, everything is the domain of this function. Now, we want to generalize things, right? We want to see what happens uh, if we generalize things uh, for all the problems. So let me write it for you. So the first one could be polynomial. I'll discuss one problem from it. Second one could be fraction. Third one could be roots. And okay, I think uh, for your class, a logarithmic function is not really here. I can't really see that in the prepared lecture. So for now, I'll just uh, show these three problems, okay? But we also have one more, that's the logarithm function. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I think you, you, won't, you won't need that. So for now, we'll just discuss these three, okay? Okay, so for polynomial, let's start. Now, how does a polynomial look? Polynomial means Poly means more than two or three. And polynomial means if we have more than one or more than two terms. Okay. Now, if we have anything like this, let's say 2x plus, uh, plus 2x minus 5. So we have three terms, right? One, two, and three. So it's a trinomial. But it, as it's more than one, we'll say it's a polynomial as well. We can define that as well. So if, if we have a polynomial, straight away, we can say that all real numbers 
is or rather are a part of our domain. So if we have a polynomial, we just we can we just eyeball that polynomial once and then we can say, okay, it's a polynomial. So we'll say all real numbers, uh, our domain is all real numbers. Okay. Whenever we have a polynomial, we don't need to check anything else. But what if we have a fraction? Let's say two over x minus one. Let's say. Now let's quickly go back to the definition of domain. As I said, domain is the values of x for which our function remains defined. Now, if I take any value of x, does our y or the main function remain defined always? And the answer is no, because as you can see, if I plug in x equals one, this y becomes two one minus zero, two over one minus zero, two over zero, which is undefined, right? So that means we can see for x equals one, our function gets undefined. And as I said, the, for the values for which uh, our function gets undefined, apart from those, everything will be a part of our domain. So apart from this x equals one, everything will be our domain. So our domain will be from negative infinity to one, and from one to infinity, right? This parenthesis means we're not really including one. Everything comes to the domain. Apart from that, we have two different uh, intervals. That's why I have used this union sign. That means we are taking this interval and this interval apart from the value one itself. We're not really including this. If we include this, we need to write this, but we have used pants, right? So that's our domain. Now, how to generalize that? That means whenever we have a fraction, we just need to set denominator equals to zero. We need to see for which value of x our denominator becomes zero. And apart from that value, will say everything will be a part of our domain, okay? Apart from this guy, everything will be a part of our domain. Now, what about a root function? Let's say we have y equals square root of x minus one. Again, as I said, the values of x, our y or the main function remains defined. We say those values as our domain, right? So if I take any value of x, does it still remain defined? And the answer is of course no, because if I take a zero or anything less than that, I can see this y becomes negative something within that square root. And for our real number, we don't really accept negative negativity inside the square root sign, inside the square root sign, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So if that's the case, we'll say that these are not really a part of our domain. So whenever you have a square root sign, whenever you have a square root function, Whatever you have inside that square root, that guy needs to be greater or equal to zero. Okay, so for this one, we have x minus one, right? So we we'll say x minus one will be greater or equal to zero. If we solve it for x, I'll change sides for this one. So this will be x greater or equal to one. So this will be our domain, okay? This is going to be our domain. That means 
any value of x which is one or more is our domain. So we'll say from one to infinity. As we are including this one, as you can see, x is greater or equal one. So we'll include the one. So we'll use this. So this is our domain. So that means then the conclusion is if you have a polynomial, we'll say all real numbers are our domain. If we have a fraction, we'll just set our denominator to zero. And apart from that value for which our denominator becomes zero, we'll say everything else is our domain. And if you have a square root function, we'll just set the value inside to greater or equal zero and solve it for x. And those values will be our domain. Okay, so that's 2.1 for you. Um, in the next video, uh, we'll talk about 2.2 and 2.3. Okay.